My name is Troy Watson. I'm from uh, Las Vegas, and I'm going to be uh, presenting a case of a large Taylor osteochondral defect, which we treated with the Cardiform osteochondral allograph. This is a 24-year-old military male that previously had a large osteochondral defect. He was sent over to me from the uh, Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, and probably about a year prior to doing this cardiform case, he underwent a curatage and drilling of that lesion, which I did personally. We felt that we got a very good uh, stable rim with that uh, surgery and placed uh, microfractures, so we were hopeful that he would do well. But one year later, he uh, presented back to my office with increasing pain in his ankle and uh, said that other than the initial couple of months, he really just had a steady increasing in his uh, pain. The differential injection into his ankle was done at that time, and uh, he noted it to be helpful, which added evidence to the fact that his pain, I felt, was coming coming from this osteochondral defect. So the question comes up, what now? What do we do with this large osteochondral defect? So we went ahead and did what I think most would do, and we re-imaged him. So this is his AP and lateral x-ray about a month before we did the cardiform case. And we placed him into our uh, CT scanner, and this is what the uh, lesion appeared as. It was almost a little bit of a shoulder lesion, medial uh, lesion, and fairly large and deep dish. And this is his MRI, which actually looks pretty good. We don't see a lot of bone marrow edema here. And this is, again, about a year from the time we did his initial microfracture and debridement with curatage, that lesion. So what were our options at this point? Well, we could rescope him and microfracture uh, that lesion, and the, the data would suggest that maybe that is what sh we should do in this case. Many patients do well after a revision arthroscopy and microfracture, but I felt that that lesion was a little bit larger than most, and uh, had it been smaller, maybe a centimeter or so, I would have probably uh, preferred to move forward with just a microfracture and revision of my initial procedure. But in this case, given the uh, size of that lesion, I decided that he needed more. And so the other options were an arthroscopic debridement and placement of uh, biocartilage, maybe biocartilage with uh, bone marrow aspirate concentrate, or we could do a medial malleolar osteotomy and do uh, some type of bulk allograft or bone graft the lesion and place biocartilage, or lastly, we could use cartiform. Cartiform is a viable osteochondral allograft that uh, supplied by Arthrex. It's a cryopreserved osteochondral allograft, so we usually have to order it in for our uh, cases. And most of these uh, lesions will be larger lesions that we're putting uh, cartiform into. The uh, cartiform graft uh, retains the endogenous chondrocytes and extracellular matrix and growth factors, and this is why I think it's uh, helpful for these uh, cases. The implantation technique is fairly uh, easy, but it does require more of an open procedure where you will curatage the lesion and then you have to fix the cartiform graft to the underlying uh, bony anatomy. And I personally use uh, small push lock anchors. We'll use the 2.5 millimeter push lock anchors and we'll attach to that a um, 4.0 vicral uh, suture. I'll usually place four such uh, anchors into the uh, talus at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, and then I'll bring those uh, sutures up through the uh, meshed graph and use those to suture in place. Now, of course, this will create a small tiny knot on top of your graph, but if you use a 4.0 vicral suture, this is really a minuscule uh, size and I think will uh, dissipate given time as vicral usually will uh, vanish from the joint. So this is uh, intraoperative on that uh, particular case. We made a medial malleolar osteotomy and this picture on the left depicts us actually using the push lock anchor and placing it down into the joint, bringing the uh, suture through the uh, graft. And then, of course, you're going to fix your, your uh, medial malleolar osteotomy. We use the Arthrex 4.0 millimeter cannulated screws for this, and this is the final construct. So rehabilitation in this case, I definitely go a little bit slower than if we're doing a uh, microfracture as a primary procedure. If we're using any type of biologic, I usually keep these patients non-weight-bearing for six weeks. In this case, we used a splint for the initial uh, couple of 
of weeks and then placed him into a boot so he could at least begin some early range of motion, but we kept him non-weight bearing for the full six weeks. And then we went to touchdown weight bearing at six weeks to eight weeks and then full weight bearing starting at the eight week mark. And the main reason was I just don't want to delaminate that cartiform graft. In this case, the outcome, I can tell you, I recently saw this patient in the office. He's, I do not have a long-term outcome on him, but he's now about seven months from the procedure, and he notices a substantial difference than when we did his first primary procedure with microfracture alone. He uh, never really turned the corner with that microfracture case. With the cartiform, he states that he has no pain. He's back to running and jumping and doing everything that he needs to do as a military man. So far so good with him and hopefully he'll have a good long-term outcome, but from what I can see at this juncture, it looks like we solved his problem of ankle pain.